Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 103 through to 105 um, of section 3 of the pink booklet. So 103 and 104 are about radioactive materials. So there's two different types of half-life. There's a normal half-life and a biological half-time, and they're two different things, um, which is described sort of in the information above the questions. Question 103 says, a radioactive material has a half-life of 10 minutes. How long will it take for 90% of the material to be transmuted? In other words, have 10% of it left. So we can make a table, percentage left, and time. So at the start, obviously, we're going to have 100% of it left, and that's going to be time zero. And we'll do this in minutes. So half of it will go in 10 minutes and another half will go at the next 10 minutes. And we can just work our way down until we have our answer. So we know it's going to be, so say this is going to be 6.75 and 40. We know it's going to be in between 30 and 40 minutes. And that gives us an answer of B for question 103. 104 then says, in order to undergo a scan, a patient is injected with a radioactive isotope that has a half-life of several days. Um, but there's a different biological half-time, so that sentence doesn't really help us there. So distinguishing between the two, knowing they're separate, helps. Um, so we're told if 1% of the isotope remains in the patient body after, or in between 13 and 14 hours later, which the following is the best estimate of the biological half-time. So again, we can make a, a table and then work out how much time that would have taken, sort of working backwards. So at the start, obviously, we've got 100, but we can go down just as we did before. And I'll just simplify this a little bit, and I'll just call this 4, 2, and 1. So we know that this happens between 13 and 14 hours later. So this would be 14 hours when it's going to be sort of less than one. Um, so then, if this whole process takes 14 hours, um, how many sort of halvings happen? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if it's halved seven times in 14 hours, then each one has to be two hours. So the half-life would be two hours. So that gives us an answer for 104 of B as well. And this next question is 105, and it's a bit of a strange one. So it says, making a few simple assumptions, which of the following is the best estimate of the rate at which your fingernails grow? Um, so this one, obviously, it's difficult to know where to start because there's not very much information given, and it's not something I'm sure we've looked at before. Um, but it does leave it wide open by saying making a few simple assumptions and it is of course multiple choice so with this sort of question where you're going to have to make judgment i think just look at the answers they've given and seen which one makes the most sense now obviously it's difficult to visualize 10 to the minus 9 meters per second as a speed but what if we imagined it over a longer period of time so let's take A, for example, and we can work our way up until there's a natural stopping point where we find sort of the closest answer to what we can assume to be right, which would be the best estimate. So let's say we've got 10 to the minus 3 metres per second. That's going to be 60 times 10 to the minus 3 metres per min. So 360 times 10 to the minus 3 metres per hour which is 36 centimetres per hour, so we know that's going to be far too fast. So we can rule out A, obviously. So what if we um, looked at B? So all of these answers, we've got 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 9, and 10 to the minus 12. So these are obviously all a factor. Um, you're sort of dividing by a 1,000 each time as you go down here. So if it's going to be 36 centimetres um, per hour for this one, then it's going to be 36 centimetres. It's going to be for 10 to minus 6, 36 centimetres per thousand hours. Um, 
so let's think about what a thousand hours might be. So a thousand hours, um, it's going to be roughly 40 days and to grow um, 36 centimeters in five and a half weeks, it doesn't seem quite right. So we can rule that one out. And it obviously we're getting a little bit closer. So what about 10 to the minus nine? Well, that's going to be um, a thousand times that, which is obviously a bit of an overshoot, but certainly closer to to what's right than 10 to the minus six. Um, so that means we can stop there and say that the answer is C. If then we looked at this last one, then obviously it will be way, way off the mark. So this judgment, this assumption that they're asking us to make, we can just rule that one out. So through just um, putting these numbers into context, maybe understanding what they mean a little bit more, um, we can decide on answer C for question 105. So